Lake Tulare was once the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi River. The lake would grow every winter as rainfall and snowmelt from the nearby Sierra Nevada range flowed down and filled the basin. By 1920, the rivers that fed the lake were dammed and diverted for uses such as irrigation. In the mid-20th century, the lake basically vanished and was covered with farms that grew a variety of crops. Now, it seems Tulare Lake is back with a vengeance. Water is quickly flooding back into the lake engulfing towns and farms, submerging roads, and reviving the so-called Phantom Lake. In today's video, we will explore the re-emergence of Lake Tulare and its extreme consequences for the region, its people, and their livelihoods. Before we get started, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and leave a comment below as it's the best way to help us grow as a channel. Tulare Lake was once a permanent feature of the San Joaquin Valley. It covered an estimated 790 square miles, about four times the size of Lake Tahoe, creating a biodiverse wetlands ecosystem that encompassed approximately 10% of California. The lake was an immense wetland with millions of birds and ducks, a part of the Great Pacific Flyway, and indigenous groups lived at its shores. In the late 1800s, settlers began diverting to Larry's tributaries for agricultural purposes, incrementally drying the lake and exposing nutrient-rich soil. Now, the lake-turned farmland is a powerhouse for agricultural production. The four counties within the basin, Fresno, Kern, Kings, and Tulare, are some of the top producing counties in the state. As one of the most important agricultural regions in the state, the Lake Tulare Basin is worth an estimated $2 billion in dairy products and crops like wheat, grapes, tomatoes, cotton, corn, alfalfa, almonds, and pistachios. Lake Tulare is commonly known as a phantom lake, meaning it is a temporary body of water that usually appears during times of heavy rain. Such lakes tend to be relatively shallow compared to permanent bodies of water. Before water was diverted, Lake Tulare was approximately 37 feet in depth. Because shallow lakes have a greater surface area to volume ratio, they tend to dry up more quickly than deeper ones as the sun heats up and evaporates the water. The hot and arid climate of the California Central Valley makes its phantom lakes particularly fleeting. Owens Lake, located 220 miles north of Los Angeles, is another example of a once depleted body of water that has recently come back to life. Following the construction of Los Angeles' aqueduct in 1913, the lake's freshwater supply was drained by diverting its tributary. However, after 110 years, the lake is now rapidly filling up once again. Lake Tulare has a similar history. It serves as a natural watershed for the Sierra Nevada mountain range, which channels meltwater through various rivers and into the basin. Today, the entry of water into the basin is blocked or diverted by levees and dams, but recent storms have shown that these systems are limited in their ability to prevent flooding in the event of a significant influx of water. Heavy rain and snow in the first three months of 2023 has once again brought water to Tulare's lake bed. With a population of 22,000 people, Corcoran is the largest city in the vicinity of the historic lake. A satellite image captured by NASA shows agricultural fields near Corcoran covered with water. The dark blue color represents the water, and a stark difference can be observed in the images captured on the 1st of March and the 1st of April, where the flooded area has significantly expanded. Two successive atmospheric rivers hit California in March 2023, contributing to flooding along the San Joaquin River and a breach of the Los Angeles Aqueduct. The Tulare Basin floods occasionally, especially during extremely wet years, and years with abundant snowpack on the Sierra Nevada mountains. The lake has filled and dried up at many points in history, but this time, towns and farms stand in the way. The lake bed flooded in 1969, 1983, and 1997. Until this year, 
1969 and 1983 held the record for the wettest years with near record levels of snow in the region. Many homes in the city have been flooded and several roads have been closed. Smaller towns to the south, Allensworth and Alpaw, were surrounded by water from overflowing rivers and were both under evacuation warnings as of the end of March. The basin's agricultural activities have been devastated and farmers have been forced to relocate cattle from the region. The recent storms in the region are caused by atmospheric rivers, which are long narrow streams of atmospheric moisture. These rivers originate in the tropics, where warm air can hold much more water than colder regions. As global temperatures rise due to climate change, the atmosphere's capacity to hold water also increases. Despite the already significant flooding, most of the water that will enter the Tulare Basin hasn't done so yet. Plenty of snow can still melt and flow down from the Sierra Nevada mountain range that lies east of the San Joaquin Valley. Each spring, as temperatures warm, the snowpack accumulated over the winter begins to melt. As it does so, gravity pulls meltwater down from the mountains and into the lowest regions of the valley the Tulare Lake Basin being the most vulnerable. Simply put, rain and snow create the flood, but rising temperatures intensify it. This year, the Sierra Nevada snowpack is three times larger than normal and still growing. A snow survey by the California Department of Water Resources on April 3rd found the statewide snowpack was 237% of average for this date, among the largest ever recorded. All of that water is eventually going to have to enter the San Joaquin watershed, and a lot of it's going to pass through the Tulare Lake Basin. While an influx of water is a relief to many in California, easing a years-long drought and refilling reservoirs, it spells disaster for regions like the Tulare Basin. Residents are already seeing vast amounts of water threaten their livelihoods, and it's only just beginning. If current conditions keep up, this could be the worst flood for the Lake Tulare Basin yet. Since Tulare Lake is a shallow and isolated body of water without any tributaries or outlets, any water that enters the basin remains there until it evaporates. The lake has a layer of impermeable clay beneath it that prevents most of the water from seeping into the ground. As a result, the volume of water that has accumulated during this year's flood may take several months or even years to evaporate completely. With this comes another set of challenges. The water is accumulating in farmland that has been treated with fertilizers, pesticides, and other chemicals which may mobilize contaminants. Farms with animal agriculture produce lots of fecal waste, threatening microbial contamination. When the lake bed floods, the sewage, along with toxic heavy metals, will become part of the water system, potentially contaminating groundwater and local streams. Tulare County has already issued a health warning regarding floodwater contamination. There are a number of different solutions to minimize the threat from flooding in the Lake Tulare region. Restoring natural floodplains, adding levee setbacks and recharge basins, and creating more spaces for the water to flow to are among the solutions. But implementing land use changes is easier said than done. The San Joaquin Valley has a complicated history of water disputes, and no single entity has the authority to manage these issues effectively. Many of these decisions regarding water allocation are made by private landowners, resulting in extra-legal activities and political conflicts. As for the current situation, it may be too late to take any significant action this spring, and the only course of action left is to endure the influx of water and mitigate the damage as best as possible. The challenge now lies in long-term planning for future floods. But for now, whatever comes next, the fate of the communities on the shores of Lake Tulare will be intertwined with the water. The rainfall, the snowfall, the snowpack will be a major issue for the next several months. What are your thoughts on this recent crisis with Lake Tulare? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.